Hello, my name is Maria Stepanova and welcome to the NEAH events. And today our guest is Bahir Artina. Uh, Bahir is an ESG consultant at KPMG. But uh, we discuss today sustainable habits. Uh, Bahir, I attended your public lecture on sustainability in Almaty and I liked it very much. Uh, today uh, we are working in another format and we have less time, but still, uh, it seems important for both of us to discuss uh, why we need to change our behavior uh, if we want to move towards sustainability and uh, how this can be done. First of all, maybe I want to ask you um, how you explain that sustainability is everyone's business, why our daily habits do matter. Mm -hmm. Um, hello, hello, and thanks for inviting me for this uh, wonderful discussion. Um, it's a pleasure to be here and to speak up uh, about the environment and sustainability topic in general. So thank you, thank you all for having me. Um, so first of all, I would probably say that um, uh, that the actions of each and every individual. Uh, they uh, accumulate and uh, aggregate and uh, like as a result we have the pollution in the oceans and the diminishing quality of air in the in big cities like uh, New Delhi, Dubai and, uh, and New York and all of those different places. So it is it is the effect, which is caused by the actions of each and every one of us. So if um, if I'm, uh, for example, I'm buying like uh, uh, huge SUVs for my family, like, I don't know, like free SUVs and my wife would drive an SUV, my, my kids would drive an SUV. So in total, our family would contribute to the, uh, to like to the increase of the emissions of the greenhouse uh, gases in our community, and so, like by this example, you can see how each and every one of us contributes to the um, to to the to, to the worsening uh, conditions of our environment. Uh, but when we change our habits, does it mean we should restrict ourselves? No SUVs. No light, no heat, or how would you explain that it is, a, what is it? It's just a new manner of life? Um, so I think that um, we should just uh, pivot to a different kind of mindset and um, understanding or maybe even awareness of the things we do in our everyday life. And um, uh, we shouldn't reject the things that modernity has brought to us, like the uh, the ease of transport, uh, like um, uh, like driving cars and flying airplanes, or any other uh, means of transport, or any other like sorts of um, commodities, or I don't know, even luxuries that uh, like modern people have, but. Um, because we have uh, the new age of technologies, we can allow ourselves not to travel as much. Like we're having this talk, we could have this talk, uh, like, I don't know, I might be in New York right now, you might be in, um, uh, I don't know, in Paris. And so we don't have to travel to see each other, to talk to each other. So like those digital innovations, they kind of help us reduce uh, the carbon footprint from our travels for those calls and conferences that we have uh, almost uh, every month or every quarter and every year. So, so it helps. And on the other side, we have things like, um, um, like um, cell phones and the, the ones that have replaceable batteries and replaceable uh, like cameras or like uh, like different like basically there are companies for example that uh, try to market uh, try to uh, introduce new products to the market which have uh, the component of of uh, like you can basically adjust 
any products to your own likes and use them for years and years so like you can buy one uh, smartphone and use it for like 10 20 years just yeah. because you're speaking about circular economy actually and uh, long life cycle yes 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 and so the same thing could be applied to building houses like if we stop building houses that are going to be demolished in 10 15 years and we can actually start building the build the building uh, buildings <laughs> sorry uh like uh, uh, probably even we can look at the things that being were built in ancient times like in the roman era or greeks because the things they built we can still use uh today and so this kind of uh, quality and uh, uh standards of of construction of the new projects could be used in the um in the projects we're going to build uh, tomorrow uh, in 10 years in 20 years and so I, I i feel like we could apply this to like our everyday life and how we conduct business in general well yes but that uh it's that is an interesting topic uh, on um what we can do as just uh, in our family in our flat in our house in our everyday life and then what we can do uh when we act uh as a constructor, as a designer, as a university professor, say yes, that's a bit different things. But still, uh, you mentioned that we need to change the mindset. And I believe that uh, that is the point when, uh, if or when we do change our mindset, then we start to act uh, properly, so to say, so to we start to be more green and uh, sustainable. Uh, but uh, I know that you were um, uh, studying abroad, and uh, I actually I heard it uh, uh, within your lecture, and uh, you talked about a number of examples that helped you uh, to create that sustainable habits and sustainable behavior. Maybe could you please tell a couple of words? Uh, uh, where have you, wh where and what have you been studying, and some examples of that sustainable habits uh, uh, inside that environment? Mm -hmm. Okay, I would be glad. I would be glad to share some of the examples and cases that I've seen and that I've tried to accommodate in my, into my life from the things that I saw uh, while studying at different universities. So, for, first of all, I I have graduated from um, uh, from the bachelor's uh, program of uh, University of London uh, with major in economics. And uh, I I also went to a number of programs in the U.S. Um, specifically to Dartmouth College in New Hampshire, uh, Hanover, and um, I've taken I've taken uh, part into the uh, leadership program at Harvard University, uh, Aspire Leaders Program. Uh, where we had uh, basically at Dartmouth and Harvard, we had a chance to study uh, sustainable development goal, uh, model in general and uh, some aspects of social entrepreneurship uh, within uh, New England, like states like uh, New York, uh, Vermont, New Hampshire, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. And so um, probably the easiest way or did that um, that one can uh, start acting like now uh, and uh, like within the livelihood of their houses and uh, and so on. So like the first thing would probably be to just reduce uh, the unnecessary waste, uh, as in like buying too many groceries. Um, and like in the end, most like maybe like thirty percent of them is being thrown away. So which which is uh, a definition of of uh, wasteful behavior. So uh, this could be improved upon. So like if you buy groceries from local um, uh, markets, like farmers markets, for example, in that way uh, uh, you can uh, help the local economy to prosper and grow. And at the same time, if you do those trips to the farmer's market more frequently, you can get free, fresh vegetables or meat uh, locally sourced 
and at the same time you wouldn't be uh, uh, wouldn't be forced to throw away as much uh, food uh, as if you would be buying it from the supermarket where usually uh, there are huge quantities of uh, different products and you sometimes overbuy things that you uh, might consume to not to the fullest extent so this is probably the easiest thing that you could do the other thing is on the, also on the spectrum of reducing is uh, uh, like uh, try to be aware of the environment that you live in like the and the resources that you use like water um, for example, if you uh, if you brush your teeth, you can turn off the tap while doing that. Like this is the easiest thing that you could do. Like you can start right. doing right. Um, the other thing would be to install um, like a specific sort of um, adjustments to your uh, tap. Uh, like to make it more efficient and like to introduce uh, sort of uh, like air in air yeah, like airflow uh-huh yeah airflow into the into the tap so so that mm -hmm. the overall consumption of water would be reduced by like 30 40 percent so and um, mm, yeah and then just in general so there are like principles like uh, uh, reduce, reuse, recycle, and so like having this sort of framework uh, uh, in your mind, like every day, uh, every month, of like trying to uh, recycle the plastic, the uh, glass, or uh, uh, paper, or any, or or even food scraps, if you are able to contribute them to um, um, to specific uh, farms or like. Uh, uh, the places where they can efficiently use, uh, make a use of those scraps. So, like, uh, so basically, yeah, just it's, apply the framework. It's not it. so easy to do in a big city. I mean, food. Yes. Food waste. Yes. yes. I agree. Food and, waste is, uh, and um, we should try uh, to force our local authorities to implement the. Uh, like unified uh, solution to this uh, food food waste management systems. For example, I saw uh, how is how it was done in Vermont, in Burlington. I visited the facility of the uh, solid waste uh, uh, recycling uh, district in Vermont, and one of the uh, uh, materials that they gather is actually food scraps, and they and they make. Um, Uh, like nutrients for the for the enriching the institutions, uh, university schools, uh, maybe even households. So um, they can actually like the economy of Vermont has actually benefit uh, has gained some benefit from introducing this program because they can not only reduce the amount of gases that are being uh, emitted from the landfills because one, the, mm -hmm. the most uh, harmful uh, source of those emissions is actually food waste that is trapped within uh, uh, like in between plastic and all uh, other sorts of uh, uh, waste and so they not only decreased the uh, uh, amount of uh, gases from the from the food waste but also they, they used the same waste to enrich the soil and to make even to make more food available for the people in the surrounding area. So uh, I, I feel like this is a great example that we could uh, learn from and uh, implement in our local communities. Uh, right. Uh, what you are speaking about, uh, what I hear that uh, it's a parallel process that uh, we start to behave in some different way and still we need some infrastructure we need some support from our local or even high authorities right for example to use less package less plastic uh, oh. to for this uh, uh, sorting of waste um, for reuse of it but still we uh, well who is the first or uh, are these process parallel 
well because some people say well if the infrastructure is not ready it's it's it has no sense for me to do something to act mm -hmm. uh, it's a great question i'll probably say um my comments from the perspective of an economist so if there is a demand there is then there's going to be a supply so if more people start demanding for the infrastructure to be in place then the local authorities and the federal government will be more aware of the fact that the people the nation the companies uh, or even international and, and international companies included they all uh, uh, require or they they ask for the uh, like the implementation of those rules and for the construction of the um, infrastructure so the more we speak about this the more uh, the people who are actually in charge and are able to make the difference uh, uh, the more these people are going to hear about the the problems and the initiatives that we discuss and so uh, in one way it could be done like that so so probably if referring back to your question it would be a parallel process so mm -hmm. the people so the first of we all need the, no, we need not to wait yes yes uh, <laughs> of course waiting is uh, is not productive uh, when trying to solve any problem or uh, issue so yeah we should we should um, try to do it like within our uh, own capabilities like mm -hmm. for example uh, uh, if we talk about uh, separate garbage collection of like plastic glass paper and food waste mm -hmm. like we could do it within within our home so like for example in in my childhood um so we we used to do and still do within our family we used to collect uh, food waste separately and then we would uh, bring those food scraps to uh, to farmers that we know, like the friends of ours, or to like to dogs uh, that are not being properly fed. And so, in this way, you can help the um, the animals, uh, like uh, and the, the farmers in the like in the community that you are in, and at the and same reduce our our footprint actually. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah, and the other thing is, is that, for example, um, like I've been to different uh, coffee shops of Starbucks, and for example, in Vermont, uh, they contribute the leftovers uh, that are about to expire to the food bank, whereas in different places, uh, like in different countries, in different regions they uh, um, they cannot uh, um, donate any of the uh, food to the food bank because there is no infrastructure in place but if for example if if starbucks or any other company uh, establishes the policy that it is uh, like a must for all the subsidiaries for all the um uh, branches of its company to have the system in place then the regulators and the uh, the local authorities would have to react and have to act on those um, initiatives that are being imposed by the international companies so this is another way of how we could push uh, the uh, agenda of uh, like a pro proper uh, separate garbage collection and and less plastic actually yeah yes um, yes but such things like food sharing or food 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 banks they they do require some changes in legislation but yes i believe it's it is possible uh, maybe more examples from your student life uh, one how how students are engaged into that sustainability actions uh, not not just actions but day-to-day uh, -day habits maybe what are mm -hmm. they uh, encouraged to do to get more sustainable within the campus or out of it? So probably the most uh, vivid example is from the Dartmouth canteen um, or dining hall. 
uh, they they have this policy where uh, there are no plastic containers allowed within the premises of the dining hall. And so if a student wants to buy, if a student wants to buy uh, a meal to take away, he he will be uh, forced to bring his own container to the to the dining hall. So in that way, the I believe they decreased the uh, carbon footprint uh, from the dining hall by by like uh, thirty or forty percent, just because of the abolishment of the plastic uh, single use plastic containers. Mm -hmm. And so this is probably the example. Uh, from the student life that I'm quite familiar with, but um, ah yeah, on the other side we, there is also, um, for example, at University of Vermont, uh, there is a, and I believe in many other universities as well, there is a, a special um, shower in place for the people who are cycling or running to the campus. So 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 like having those. Uh, uh, places where you can shower or we can change uh, around the premises of the campus. It helps uh, the, uh, the students and the uh, professors uh, to commute like daily without using any like, cars or any other sort, any other transportation that uses fossil fuels as the, um, yeah, that, that are using like gasoline or any other sorts of fuel. So, yeah, so this is one of the examples as well. Um, oh, and, oh, yeah, an another one from darkness is that um, uh, um, probably uh, uh, showing that the food that is being prepared and being served at the, at the dining hall is locally sourced. Probably that is also sustainable because uh, at Dartmouth they would show like uh, on uh, like on TVs or like on small notes uh, next to the dish that you want, would want to purchase. They would uh, name the farm that is coming from, like the the the, base, the resources or like I mean the vegetables and. and uh, or bread or any other sort of um, food like that. They uh, they show like they show the faces of the people that work in those farms and they show the location of those farms and like the, and the people and the students they understand that uh, they are not buying uh, produce from like Southeast Asia or from Africa or like from, from basically from uh, uh, places that are really far away. So like like ninety percent of the meals. Are, are cooked using the local ingredients. So it also helps to sort of understand the supply chain and like how uh, how the meal that you have in front of you, how it was made. And so like having this the same sort of uh, mindset in our daily life, uh, when like buying the things from the supermarkets or um, cafes, like if you pay attention to how the ingredients came to this table, then you would make more actions towards supporting those businesses with your dollar or like your any other currency that you have. And and like if more people start doing that, then the more um, like popular or the more widespread this locally produced uh, economy or uh, would be uh, uh, in use. And so this is another um, beautiful example of how like student life could be more sustainable. And I would say, well, actually, this is an example from the student life, but it can be uh, adapted to any to any um, to any everyday to, to the everyday habits of any of us. For example, when I come to a supermarket, I can uh, expect that they show the um, origin of that food but uh, I can read their package, right? And I can vote with my uh, money for their mm, food that, that, are, mm, that got a short supply chain 
and that uh, origins from some farmers not far from here. So I contribute to the local economy and I understand that the logistic, logistic uh, costs were not so high and it's also some uh, reducing of carbon carbon footprint. So I, I would I would say uh, it's again uh, the process from the both side in parallel from me and from their supermarket, say, or from uh, the canteen, the cafe, etc. So they can show me that supply chain, and uh, I can still ask them and try to choose and to pay uh, for certain food and for certain products. Yeah, that that's. That's great, and that is an example where I do not need to wait for something, for some action from their side. I can do it myself. And yeah. um, uh, you um, you said you were studying several sustainability programs. Uh, what um, what were you studying there actually? What were the programs? And uh, uh, when our students. Uh, currently study something else. Uh, I wonder how that sustainability cr criteria is embedded into ordinary, so to say, subjects. Because, uh, or is it just a separate topic? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Based uh, on my own experience, uh, the uh, sustainability topics are not um, included in the classical uh, study curriculum so if a student wants to to study sustainability he needs to go to a specific degree that has uh, uh, ecology or biology or maybe chemistry or any like other like natural science that is, that has relation any sort of re resemblance with the um the environment uh, within the economics course that I had, uh, we maybe briefly touched on the sustainability uh, subject within um, like corporate uh, social responsibility for huge comp for international companies. Like that is, uh, uh, but it is mostly seen as a sort of a, a benchmark of how the company is doing in comparison to the peers and uh, like basically used for different uh, uh, rating agencies and certificates and stuff like that for uh, uh, green finance and for the the chance to be a part of the uh, like green bonds initiatives uh, green loans and uh, things like that so like within the term within the terms uh, of the uh, financial markets uh sustainability sustainability is, is mostly used as a sort of a leverage to access those green green uh, and newly emerging markets and um, uh, the the programs that i had a privilege to study at uh, were about um, entrepreneurship and the environment at Dartmouth. that is the name of the course um uh, and uh, so first of all we studied what is the sustainable model uh, uh, and uh, what are the main principles of the un sustainable development model um and then we uh, then we uh, went out of the campus to actually see how it's done within the companies and businesses in the area. So we've been uh, driving around New Hampshire, Vermont, New York, uh, and we were visiting uh, the companies and we were talking to the CEOs or like the management of those companies. And we were actually um, looking into the how the business is being conducted and how uh, their values are being transmitted to their customers to their employees and to and the what were, sorry what were those companies was it small businesses or uh, co big, big corporations um most of them were uh, small companies within the states uh, within like uh, new england and the northern north uh, eastern part of the us um but some of them were uh, um, I don't know, international companies, like we 
we had um, a company, Ben & Jerry's, uh, which is a producer of uh, ice cream, uh, which was actually uh, founded uh, in Vermont. And so we also had a chance to sort of uh, look into the corporate culture of, of this company. But I'm not entirely sure if it's uh, if it was part of the curriculum. It's just it was just available for us to see. <laughs> but most of the most of the companies are local, though. So, um, for example, one of the uh, um, one of those companies is the King Arthur's Flower. Um, it's a bakery uh, which sells. Um, different uh, like I don't know pizzas uh, like bakery products like croissants uh, but they also sell a flour that is being um, produced using regenerative agriculture so so they try to impose a new way of farming and so the use of regenerative agriculture is not widespread yet uh, and so, like being able to see how this company works, and what are the values of this company, and like uh, to, to be able to talk to the like founders and employees, it's uh, it's an it's an amazing chance to actually like dive into the uh, like everyday life of the people who are building those companies, and like you can uh, all, almost imagine how you could implement a similar. Um, like business strategies or like business models in different countries, like in, I don't know, in Central Asia or like in mm -hmm. Southeast Asia, in Africa or any other place. And the other program that I had a chance to study at was um, Aspire Leaders Program at Harvard. Um, uh, there we didn't have uh, the sort of uh, traveling aspect of like being able to meet the like founders and the employees, but we had a, a num number of classes uh, from the professor uh, of uh, Harvard Business School, and uh, uh, all of all of which were majoring in uh, like circular economy or like sustainable buildings or uh, social impact or inter or social entrepreneurship. And so this program allowed to sort of um, uh, take a closer look at how the academics perceive those questions and uh, how, like, what kind of research is being done and uh, what kind of uh, solutions we might have uh, to those global issues that, that are in front of us. And so I had a chance to... Uh, ask some questions about uh, poverty, about uh, uh, climate action, uh, about uh, you know, reaching out to the people uh, in charge, and like, um, and basically, uh, I had a chance to discuss all of those issues with the professors at Harvard, and so it also gave me a sort of um, uh, an insight. On, on how I could act uh, uh, if I build my own business or if I uh, work within a huge company, how I could uh, off what kind of uh, programs or initiatives I could offer to the table and how um, and how each and every one of us could uh, contribute to the uh, to attaining those sustainable development goals. So yeah. Well, I, I think that is the main question actually uh, we started to speak about the sustainable habits uh, in our everyday life and yes we both agree that uh, it, it, it's a kind of must be yes so we, we should act more consciously and more sustainably uh, and it does matter uh, but then it's a kind of an endless process yes uh, when you are speaking about that farmers or small and medium-sized businesses uh, which are trying to be which try to be sustainable uh how did they start so uh were the, these people enthusiasts or were they uh, educated in this way so their managers their financial managers their every the salesman everybody needs to uh, understand to be aware of how it all works and then 
is it uh, possible to educate everybody in this way or to uh, what is what, when you study business there i understand there is a kind of uh, mm, bulk of topics on sustainability and how it works but if you study i don't know uh, if you're an engineer working for some business yes do you need to know something about sustainability and how your decisions actually influence uh, influence it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and how to make that they how, how to do so that engineers also understand the impact of their decisions Mm -hmm. mm. As far as I can see, um, the people uh, generally uh, in countries like Germany or um, Japan or even like South Korea or uh, some states in the US, um, they have a sort of a general understanding of uh, sustainability and what it means and what things should be done. And I probably think it comes from the, um, also the, the people living in the Scandinavian countries like Norway, Finland, and Sweden, uh, and Denmark, they also have um, a general understanding of um, uh, like ESG and sustainable development. And I believe it's just a part of the educational system of those countries and part of the legislative system. For example, in Japan and in South Korea, uh, uh, it is a law to separately collect the garbage. And if you're not uh, disposing it correctly, then you're fined. And those fines are extremely high. And so there is a, an incentive in place, the economic incentive uh, to be sustainable, because otherwise, you will be losing money or you will not be able to uh, be listed on a stock exchange. So like there are those economic incentives for companies and for individuals uh, that are being uh, proposed uh, top down. So they're coming from the heads of the governments, from the parliament, from the, um, from the CEOs of huge companies. And so like, um, so having having this widespread understanding and knowledge of sustainability, of course, is useful. But if it's not, um, if it's not uh, coming from the people in charge, people who can actually affect the uh, livelihood of the people and who can uh, direct uh, the businesses and individuals in the right way. Like if it's not coming from them, then uh, it's a very tedious and complicated process. But still, we need to to start. For example, for uh, the developing countries, for the emerging markets, for Central Asia, for I don't know, uh, India, uh, people. Th there is a request, yes, to be more sustainable, to reduce their uh, footprint, the environmental and carbon footprint and to help sustainable development to save planet so to say yes uh, but um, we so people need uh, to be shown what are their opportunities for them and still they need some support yes but uh, so you have uh, studied uh, sustainability in different ways and uh, uh, you got a wide scope of practices and of experience concerning sustainability. Now uh, you are in Kazakhstan, as I suppose, uh, yes, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, what would you say could be the first step? So what can I do myself? So I live in Almaty now. What can I do myself? Not waiting for any help and support. And uh, then uh, from level to level, what can be done to uh, make these uh, actions uh, mm, more more uh, so massive, so to say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of the one of the solutions would probably be uh, leading by your own example, and for example, uh, like uh, if you are 
uh, disposing uh, garbage separately, for example, uh, you could uh, show online, like on social media, or or maybe like over phone calls, telling the people around you that it is actually doable and it's easy to do. Uh, and uh, I believe there is some infrastructure uh, in Almaty that allows to. I need to find it out. Okay. Yeah, there is there is some infrastructure uh, from like from Coca Cola from. Um, yeah, I remember. Uh huh. I saw it. Some local like small uh, companies uh, that are also acting uh, in this field. So like you can support them and like you can pay them a visit and uh, ask how they're doing and like uh, promote them on social media so this is one way um another way is uh, uh is probably um, if you have uh the ability to um, contribute to the educational system or maybe educational development of the people in the, in the local communities uh if you have uh, the resources and the connections in place, uh, you can try like um, uh, providing different courses for the public or for the um, children at school or for the students at universities or for the uh, companies like. Um, so to like, become an influencer actually, yes. Yes, yes, yes. So, like different companies, they uh, often have uh, workshops uh, to sort of, in, uh, or like uh, to sort of increase the um, integrity of the company. Uh, and you you can, for example, provide uh, the platforms or the different activities that the companies might. Uh, uh, um, might contribute to um, in maybe even in like in team building activities and those team building activities if designed properly if if they have sustainability principles in mind and if they are being done by the people out of the scope uh, not even aware of the sustainability development model if they're acting within within this framework and uh, then they can like by action by actually doing things they can uh, internally or like uh, or maybe they can internalize those values and those um, aspirations that we all have within this uh, uh, ESG mainstream uh, that is taking place in Europe in the US like in some parts of Asia and so mm, like I had a chance to to be um, a founder uh, of uh, youth movement uh, back in my hometown. And so I had a, um, I had a, I had a chance to see uh, like over like 50 people working with me on, um, uh, on water pollution issues. And so the people who were helping me to gather the plastic off the rivers of the riverbanks uh, in my region, they, uh, after going through those uh, uh, like volunteering activities, now they, they basically don't have um, they don't have um, how to say like they don't have the um, like physically they cannot throw the garbage away like yeah they... it's a kind of block for them <laughs> they can't allow to act in this way yeah yeah so if if a person uh, goes through uh, a similar activity uh, and uh, he actually like believes and uh, understands the, the values behind those actions then he can slowly uh, get into the mainstream and to get into the um, like mm, sort of a habit of like thinking in that way and and like and the thoughts and the ideas that people have they uh, uh, they most frequently they lead to action so like having those um, uh, activities 
um, um, being offered to the people of different ages, of different genders, uh, uh, from different communities, uh, from the, with different educational background, uh, and so on. Uh, like it, it helps um, to involve as many people as possible. And the other thing I've also been thinking about lately is that um, if, if possible, then people who are very active in this field, they should be uh, encouraged uh, and, and should be like sent to different educational programs like myself, mm -hmm. to, to the UK, to the US, uh, to, to Europe, to, I don't know, like Singapore, Japan, South Korea, like to the places where this um, topic is being developed more uh, and to the extent uh, that like each uh, company and uh, each um, uh, uh, local community is aware of those values and all of those frameworks and sort of to uh, immerse these people in, in, in this environment and then uh, take them back to the communities uh, they, they came from. And these people will uh, lead by their example and so on. So, so, so yes, that would be a kind of a chain reaction. Yes. Starting from them, yeah, I, I believe it is so. Uh, actually, I would add that uh, they should uh, get in touch with uh, other uh, people of the same mindset, of the same values, and uh, then strengthen each other and do something together and share experience and uh, inspire each other so to say like you do now <laughs> um mm -hmm. yes uh, we uh, at, at NEH actually why we're interested and why we invite guests like you Bahir because uh, we believe that uh, uh, our mindset and our behavior uh, do matter to change things to get more sustainable and uh, we also uh, believe in uh, information and education in sharing experience and practices. And uh, we also got some uh, uh, products, uh, educational products like our online our course, Cut Your Bill, uh, Practical Energy Management for Buildings, for example. It is about the daily habits and how to save energy and uh, costs for energy at home or in buildings of small or medium enterprises. And uh, what you uh, are speaking today is very important, I believe, uh, because uh, you showed different uh, opportunities uh, and starting points, uh, what we can do, every of us uh, being a student or uh, being a, an entrepreneur, entrep entrepreneur, yeah, or just at home, and how to engage uh, the family and neighbors, and I would say children also. So maybe a uh, final question, uh, what would you mm, like to say to wish uh, people who will be watching us, uh, how to start and uh, how not to be tired how to be enthusiastic again and again and uh, maybe i don't know one two three three main recommendations for them if we want to change our mindset and to change our behavior and to help sustainability mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so uh, i would probably just uh say my own motivation to pursue those goals um, so when i think about uh, the environment and the planet that we live on i think of the children of my children of the children of my children and so on and uh, i'm uh, and looking at how the business is being done uh, and how it has been done for the past uh, 50 or 100 years so if we, if we are going to be on the same trajectory then the our grandchildren will not be able to enjoy the things that we had the chance to see in our childhood so like having fresh air or fresh water at their disposal at any moment 
So I don't want my my grandchildren to fight for the access to those basic human needs. And so, uh, yeah, so this is probably the way of how you could uh, think about uh, why acting uh, now is important. Uh, as far as uh, the three recommendations that I would make, um, probably the first would be uh, to to be aware and think constantly of those issues and how you could act upon them. Um, so, so like for example, within our daily life, we always think about um like plans the like the places where we want to go the kind of uh, uh, capital that we want to acquire the cars we want to drive the houses we want to live in and so like if uh if a person is willing to contribute to the well-being of our planet then all of those things should be reconsidered through the lens of sustainability, and so, if, um, so, but it's it's not easy to rethink your values uh, like in one day. So it's it's a long process. So so like the first recommendation would be to just to think of those values, and of like trying to accommodate them into your life. Um, and so the second would probably be. Um, um, be true to yourself. Uh, sometimes um, the the um, the things that people consider sustainable may not be sustainable in reality. So um, so it needs a double checking. Everything that um, you do, if and if you. Uh, claim it to be sustainable you should be um, should be ready to make some research yes yes we basically need to make some research whether it's actually uh, efficient whether it actually leads to uh, solving those issues um yeah and the third recommendation is um is that it it should be uh, it should be um, a daily process. Uh, it should be it should be part of your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And if you are watching to like to the very end of this discussion, and you're probably um, inspired, or you probably have already uh, some background in in this realm of uh, sustainability. So I believe uh, it is in your hands to. To act upon uh, uh, the uh, the problems and the issues that uh, that our generations and the future generations will face, and so by acting every day, like making those small steps, uh, we can actually make uh, a difference. So yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much, Bahir. Thank you that you joined us today and uh, helped Niech. Uh, to be an influencer and that you shared your um, experience, your motivation and your passion uh, to these uh, um, practices and these opportunities. And uh, I believe that, uh, yes, when we uh, do what you recommend and when we uh, try to find people of the same values, and mindset and when we act together then we will uh, influence and we will make change actually thank mm -hmm. you very much it was a great pleasure to talk to you today and uh, i would like to wish you a success in your position because uh, you got a leverage right because you consult businesses to be sustainable and it's it's a good impact yeah thank you thank you likewise it's been a pleasure to have this wonderful discussion and the the comment that you just made about connecting with the like-minded people it's it's essential it's, it's very important so 
I support the things that uh, uh, you do, and uh, I was glad to share my ideas, my, my experience. So, if there is any initiative coming from from your company, or from from my company, or any other company that is actually efficient and actually uh, is valuable, then we should uh, all uh, try to work together and implement them into like our businesses and our daily life so yeah thank you thank you so much for having me thank you thank you for joining us and we'll see you at NEAC again